tell you how happy we are that all of you are here for the legendary Hal Needham. We have events like this all the time, and sometimes the energy uh, is a little lower, sometimes the energy is a little higher. The energy in the room for you, Hal, is just so unbelievably enthusiastic, and the love in the room for you is so palpable. Um, we're really grateful that you're here. As I look around this room tonight, and I see faces of oh, a great many generations out there, that Hal, I hope when you get up here and look at these faces, you realize how many generations of stunt performers that you have touched, and how have you inspired all of us for all these years. What do you got to say, son? Well, uh, we um, have a few questions for you after having read your book that I thought might be uh, nice things to uh, share with the gang here, right? I may lie to you, but go ahead. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> you move out to California, and uh, you meet this uh, fellow named uh, Cliff Rose. Cliff Rose meant a lot to me. He was trying to break into Hollywood to be a stuntman. There was a show on then called You Asked For It. And he had, done a, he had done a couple of things for them. He's getting ready to do another one. He said, Hal, I need a partner on this. Says, you want to help me? I said, what are we going to do? He said, well, Hal, I'm going to be on this very fast horse. You're going to fall over, sitting on the wheel of the airplane. And when you get to me, you jump off, knock me off the horse. I said, what? <laughs> are you kidding? He said, no. I said, OK, let's give it a whirl. So he came down. And and we did it. Hit the ground, I thought, boy, I survived. Am I glad that's over? <laughs> the director said, got to do it again, guys. What was so, the, the next film that brought you, Spirit of St. Louis? The Spirit of St. Louis. That was from Cliff Rose. A few weeks later, he come up and he said, how? I got us another job. I said, oh, good. What are we going to do this time? <laughs> he said, well, we're going to the big screen. I said, count me in. So we show up, and we do The Spirit of St. Louis. I worked on the show for six weeks. I had found a goal. I was going to be a Hollywood stuntman. Right. You decided one day you, uh, you had to destroy your SEG card? Well, what's that about? They take me on an SEG contract. When I did a stunt, they'd upgrade me. Do they do that anymore? No. Nah. Stuntmen are too smart. The production manager caught me and he said, how we're going to take you up on a SEG and when you do something, we'll convert you. I said, wait a minute. I said, I'm pretty well established as Boone's double. I want to go on a SAG card. He said, no, can't do that. He said, same as before, SE will change it. I reached in my pocket and got out my wallet, took my SAG card out and I tore it up, threw it down. I said, I don't work SAG anymore, SEG anymore. He said, then we'll just have to replace you and get somebody else. He left. I walked over to Boone, he's sitting in his chair, getting ready to go and do a scene. He said, Hal, boy, we're going to have some fun next week. He says, you're going to make a lot of money, got a lot of stunts to do. I said, well, Dick, I'm, I'm not going to go. He said, what? I said, the production man and I have a difference of opinion as to what contract I should go on. Do I go on SEG and then change me over? I said, so I, I'm not going. They called him in. He went up on to do his scene. And he said, folks, I got a little announcement. He said, Have Gun World Travel is going to have a new star next week because Hal and I aren't going on location. <laughs> he did his scene like nothing was wrong. I looked over at the production man, and he went. <laughs> I went over, and he said, You'll regret the day. And I said, maybe. But I, had, I didn't work one day at SEG after that day. Uh, you know how you ask if they upgrade like that uh, anymore? And they don't because guys like you stood up for guys like us and them. <laughs> what gave you the idea for Smokey and the Bandit? I was working on a show, Dublin Burt, uh, down in Georgia. I think it was called Gator. The driver captain, first day on the set, said, Hal, I brought some Coors from California. Said, I put a couple of cases in your room. I thanked him. 
he left not knowing I didn't drink Coors or beer. I got there, I back home, I put some in the fridge. A couple of days later, most of it was gone. So I replenished it, put some more in. A couple of days, most of that was gone. I said, wait a minute, I got a problem here. One day I didn't have to work, I got in my car so I could see my, in the parking lot, so I could see the front door of my room. People came and went, the maid went in, cleaned the room, came out, went next door. Wait a minute, that lady's got a key to my room. Could it be? I went down to investigate. Opened the fridge, yeah, it was her. I walked out where a cart was, picked up the towels, there's my cord beer. I got ready for a stern interrogation. I walked in that room and I said, why are you stealing my cords? She started to cry. She said, please don't tell my boss I need this job. I said, okay, I won't tell your boss if you'll tell me why you stole my cords. She said, my boyfriend likes it. I said, well, why in the hell don't he go to the store and buy some? <laughs> Next words out of her mouth, was the birth of Smokey and the Bandit. She said, you can't buy Coors east of the Mississippi. It's illegal, it's bootleg. A thought flashed through my little mind. <laughs> I told her to go back and take the rest of the Coors and promise not to tell her boss. We were down there eight weeks. By the time we went home, I had written Smokey and the Bandit. What advice? would you offer up to today's up-and-comers? What's, what's the one or two things that any stunt person should have inside them to be a success? Okay, I got two things. Dedication and practice. Practice, practice, practice. If I had gotten paid for all the stunts I did practicing and all the stunts I was showing other guys what to do and how to do, I would have made another million dollars. So I say, practice, practice, practice. I just want to thank everybody. You've been so wonderful and everything. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.